Hello everybody, um, welcome to this video. Now, I haven't really planned um, this video particularly well, um, but as the title would suggest, obviously, it is something that I do have to talk about, uh, and that is a relapse that I had uh, this weekend just gone. It was actually on Sunday. I've been planning to make this video as of the Monday, but genuinely haven't really had the, the chance to sit down and, and talk. Uh, certainly um, an opportunity to sort of go into to detail about what happened. Uh, now I will say up front that the very very easiest thing to do from my perspective would be to have not made this video. Obviously it's not a video I wanted to make and I don't mean that in the standard YouTuber way, I mean that in a the way that I didn't want to put myself in the position where I was making this video. Uh, so yes, it, it wasn't a video I wanted to make but having relapsed, having had that happen, um, Having done that and made that that mistake, uh, I, I, it was a video I very much wanted to make. It's a, a video I felt that I was almost obligated to make, but also I thought off the back of it there might be, if I can sort of kind of get some good out of it by talking to you guys about it um, and explaining it a bit more, then maybe I can actually have something good come out of something negative. One thing I will say um, up front is that uh, it's kind of bittersweet because... Uh, the, the actual day um, that I had the relapse, which was, was like I say, Sunday, um, my channel actually hit 100 subscribers, which I appreciate isn't a mega, mega amount, but it's something I'm really, really pleased with. Um, thank you so, so much for everyone who subscribed. Um, like I say, despite this recent issue, I, I really hope it's something that you will continue to support. And uh, despite you know my own personal relapse, uh, I still have absolute utmost faith in the advice that I give and the videos that I make. Um, predominantly because they come from sort of you know personal experience or from sort of sources of people with greater experience and, and sort of more clued up people than myself so I still have utmost faith and I hope you retain a, a bit of faith in me too uh, I, relapse can very much be part of of your recovery as long as you do get something out of it and so what I want to do today is talk about you know, what happened uh, how it was able to happen and obviously what I can now do to sort of address the situation going forward Yeah, so where did it all go wrong? Well, the reason I say is that you should hopefully, um, and I, I please ask you to uh, retain a bit of faith in what I say, is that had I listened to all of my own advice and followed my own advice to a T, then uh, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have relapsed because I wouldn't have been able to. Um, fundamentally, what happened is I ended up having access to to money uh, and an opportunity to gamble. So in effect, um, my triangle of Gambling addiction, um, which I've made a pretty rubbish video on to be fair, it's not one I was particularly proud of, but I have made a video on before. And the fundamental, you know, the, the fundamental lesson is that you need time, money, and opportunity to gamble. If you remove one of those elements, then you're not able to gamble. Uh, and on Sunday, for the first time in kind of a long time, really, I had time, money, and opportunity. What I focus on a lot of the time, apart from the self-exclusions and the blocks online, is whenever I'm out and about and there is potential to gamble, I will ensure that I don't have any more money on me than I need. If I'm going to my local pub and I want to have a few beers, I'll go to the pub, I'll take 20 quid, knowing full well that would be five pints. I shouldn't drink more than five pints anyway. Um, if I do, someone might stuff me for one or two and then I'll just pay them back the next time. So. I take 20 quid and knowing full well that I won't even go anywhere near a fruit machine or risk gambling any of that money because that's my beer money, that's my, my money I've got to enjoy myself and um, as the, the, all the videos in the pub garden would indicate, I do quite like a pint. But joking aside, I would always make sure that I don't have much more money on me than, uh, than I need. For example, I fuel my car up 20 or 30 pounds at a time. Now I drive a petrol 4x4 so my car drinks fuel like nobody's business and I have a bit of a commute so if I put £30 in it that will last me a couple of days it means I have to go to the petrol station every couple of days but if I took the 90 or £100 it would take to fill my car up in cash with me to the petrol station because bear in mind I can't have cards on me because cards equal cash then I could fill up 50 quid and think I'll keep £50 for myself and we all know where that would go so my, part of my recovery, or part of my abstinence rather than my recovery, has been 
ensuring that I don't have more money than is necessary on me at any one time. All this day I was going out, I had a few friends coming up from another town, and I was going to meet them for a few beers. So I said to my wife, um, who controls not all of my money, but certainly a significant portion of it, and the important bit, which is the stuff that we need for bills and for rent and for food and for joint joint, joint costs, basically, and for shopping and all the rest of it. So I said to my wife, can you can you give me 50 quid? I thought it might be quite an expensive day. I thought we'd probably be out for a good few hours. So I need to get a cab back as well and a, a bus into town, then maybe a taxi home or a bus home. So I knew it would cost me a few quid. So I said, look, have you got 50 pounds out of our, our joint joint account, um, which is where I transfer the money to, and um, so I can go out and, and go and meet my mates and have a few beers. She didn't have the cash. She didn't have the cash. She said, oh, here's, you know, give you the card. And... Um, you know, give you the card and you just just draw it out. Let us know. Let us know what you get out, and uh, yeah, that's all all good sort of thing. So I, right. you know what, I didn't think anything of it. I really didn't think anything of it at the time. Um, I took it out and I withdrew a hundred pounds, which is odd, really, because I, I I didn't think I'd really need much more than fifty, but I got a hundred pound out. And um, yeah, that's fine. We went out and had a few beers. Even my my friends I was with were playing um, on the fruit machines and stuff in pubs and. I was standing there having a beer and I wasn't really thinking anything of it, to be honest. They're always asking my advice because of my history I've spoken about as being a professional fruit machine player. Um, hasn't seemed to have got through to them yet that I, I don't no longer really know what I'm talking about, to be honest. But uh, yeah, so we were chatting and they were playing and that was absolutely fine. And we were out for a good few hours, went to a good few pubs. Quite a good catch up, actually. Didn't spend a, a huge amount of money, had quite a few beers. And then my mates went home. Um, I had, ironically, probably about that much of a pint left. I tend to drink a bit faster than most of my mates, so you know, I'll buy the odd extra one. Um, and they went home, and I was there in uh, in a bar, and I had literally half a pint of time to kill. And for whatever reason, my my the gambling addiction part of my brain smelt an opportunity. It smelt an opportunity to gamble. Uh, I still had a little bit of cash in my pocket. Um, from £100, but I probably still had about £50, £60, pounds, I think, on me. Um, and without... even, uh, It's almost a subconscious thing. Of course, this is a conscious decision. I'm not saying it's, it's subconscious to absolve myself of responsibility. This is a personal responsibility issue as much as anything else. But the part of my brain led me to go and just put some money, a few quid, in, in, in one of the machines in this pub. And from there on in, it was a race to the bottom. You know, I think if you're a problem gambler, if you're a gambling addict, you understand that a lot of the time when you choose to gamble, when you make that decision to play a machine, to go online, to go into the bookies or whatever you're doing, you understand that it's not, you're not there to really win. It's a race to the bottom. It's just, look, I'm going to, basically, you, you sense self-destruction. You know what's happening. You know that you are you are self-destructing. You know that you're causing yourself you know, financial harm and, and mental harm and all the rest of it, but you you kind of almost just want to do it, get it done, and get it out of the way. It's almost as though I knew from the moment I put my first tenno in that machine that I was going to do some damage, that it was going to be problems. And the logical part of my brain was probably screaming at me, I don't really recall, it's a bit of a blur, but it was probably screaming at me to just take the tenno loss. Yes, yes you've broken your your recovery, you've broken your abstinence, but you've not done any damage. You can reform, regroup, get back to it. But you know, you know, you, you don't listen to your your lo the logical part of your brain when you're gambling. You, you know, gambling took hold, and of course it did, and I lost that. And then I went to my cash point, and I withdrew as much more as I could out of our, our joint account on the card, and I lost that. Um, and uh, amazingly, and this is I think a, a trait of gamblers is that I managed to keep a tenner to get myself a taxi home. Um, and I went home, uh, and I, I didn't know what to do. Um, ended up texting my boss. Um, what's happening to my boss on a Sunday night when you're drunk? and just, you know, just had a gambling relapse. Is you know a really bad move. Luckily, my boss is, is a great guy. He knows about my problem. I spoke to him about it before. He said, "Look, you know, this has happened. I really need to borrow some money." Now he did the best thing he could do, the absolute best thing he could have done. Just say, look, I'm not just going to send you the money. I'm not just going to send you the money. You know, I'm happy to help you out. I'm happy to get you out of a, a hole. I don't want this, your family to suffer. 
um, you know I'm happy to help. But sorry, I was actually always just emotional, but um, but you need to talk to your wife about this. You, you know, you can't keep this a secret. I'm not I'm not bailing you out. I'm not helping you cover up your problem. You know, I will of course help. I, will, I don't want to see you suffer. I don't want to see your family suffer because of, of what you've done. Um, but you need to talk to them, and it's the best thing you could have done. Absolute best thing you could have done. I didn't I didn't talk to him, my wife that night. I told my boss I had because I'd hoped that he'd bail me out. Um, luckily, and I'll tell you why it's lucky in a minute. Luckily, I I couldn't I couldn't keep it from her. Um, so I talked to her. I talked to her the next day. Um, I talked to her in the morning, and uh, yeah, I mean, luckily she was she was understanding. She was disappointed, of course. Um, particularly at the moment because we, we need money. I told you before we have problems with the cars and stuff, and we need some money for that. Um, she was so she was disappointed uh, that I'd, I'd done that, but she was very very supportive, very supportive. And then a funny thing happened. My boss said we need to speak to your wife. We need to speak to your wife because we want to make sure that you're not doing this to cover up, you know, to cover up your gambling. At a point, I was like, thank fuck for that. Thank fuck I told her, because if I hadn't told her, I would have been in, in just, just a world of hurt. So I told her, um, I told her everything. I told her why there was a gap, why there was, I'd taken that money out of the joint account, and uh, I'd apologised. And, and we kind of got to, to grips with that. Um, my boss sat me down, spoke to me about it, and he was he was brilliant. Um, I actually start technically my first counselling session on Thursday, uh, which is tomorrow at the time of filming this. Um, that was almost like my first unofficial counselling session. He was brilliant. It was great to just sit down and, and talk and talk and explain, just explain what had gone on in my head. So anyway, that's my story about my relapse. Um, and why have I shared that? Sorry, I've gone on. I've realised I've gone on for so long. Sorry. Um, but that's the story about my relapse. And why am I sharing it? Well, I think that, as I said, the front end, but I think I've said at the front end, I was meant to anyway, is that gambling, gambling thrives on secrecy. Secrecy helps the, the addiction to, to thrive, it helps the addiction to perpetuate because as well as being a very sort of solitary hobby, uh, hobby oh fuck, I shouldn't describe it as a hobby, a solitary activity, gambling is one of the easiest and probably actually by far the easiest addiction to cover up and that's what makes it so dangerous. Alcoholism, Quite tricky to hide any drug addiction, sub any substance addiction is really, really hard to hide because of the physical impact it has. Gambling addiction can easily be covered up, it can be easily hidden, and that's what makes it so dangerous. It's also, like I say, a, an addiction that thrives on secrecy, it thrives on deception. So, thankfully, somehow I made the right call here, and I, I decided on this occasion not to cover up my deception because otherwise it would have come out anyway, it would have had to have come out anyway, and then. I would have lied to my wife, uh, I would have lied to my boss, and uh, yeah, I would have been in a much worse situation. But that's why I thought it was really, really important to talk to you guys. The easiest thing would have been, as I say, to um, to gloss over it, to make another video. I've got, I've got half-made videos, I've got things I wanted to talk about, you know, in my, in my traditional sense. But obviously this has to trump everything. I'm going to go forward, I'm going to make those videos, and I'm going to make them part of my recovery. But I had to talk to you about this first before we can move on. Now the second reason I wanted to talk to you about this is because of the implications it has on your recovery and the implications on mine going forward. Firstly, the most important rule I learned from this, never be complacent. You know, I've, I've been doing really well. Um, I've abstained for a long old time. Um, and you know what, like I said, I was there in those pubs watching my, my friends play the broom and, and gamble and go and put football bets on and I was fine. I was absolutely fine. I it didn't really it didn't really Im, you know impact on me at all, and so I I kind of felt a bit safe. It's only when I had that that time that time to myself, that opportunity, and the money available to me, which shouldn't have been available to me to gamble, that gambling found it, it saw its it saw its opportunity and it, it really fucking pounced on me and it hit me really hard. The other reason, like I say, is to ensure that you have as many blocks in place. Please don't just listen to my advice. I think I give good advice, like I say, because if I listened to my own advice, then this, I wouldn't be making this video now. I'd be making something far more interesting. But listen to advice you're given. Get as many blocks in place. Restrict your access to funds. Yes, ultimately, you do need to change your psychology, and this is why I'm going to counselling. But 
in, at least in the short to medium term, make sure that you are physically restricted and you are financially restricted in your ability to gamble. And st keep those blocks in place. Try and ensure. Yes, of course you can't. I, I don't blame my wife for one second for this relapse. She gave me the card. She enabled this relapse. But she doesn't know. You know, I haven't gambled in a significant amount of time that she would probably think that, you know, I was, I was fixed. And you know what? To some extent, I thought I was fixed too. But obviously I wasn't. And you should never let your guard down and never let your guard drop. And people will, of course, enable you to gamble because they don't know, they don't understand. And they probably just want to help you out. They really do want to help you out. My boss was the same. He said, look, I'll help you. I'll help fix this problem. But I'm not enabling you to gamble. My wife was the same. She gave me the card. She wanted me to go out and see my friends and have a good time and have a few beers. She didn't want to enable me to gamble, but she didn't think she was doing that. So you need to look ahead and you need to go, right, actually, if I take this card, if I take this card that's got this withdrawal limit on it, which enables me to gamble, don't do that. I could have had 10 minutes. I could have wandered to the local cash point. It's about a few hundred yards from my house. Drawn out the 50 quid I wanted. And I wouldn't have spent a penny on gambling because I wanted a day out with my mates. Make sure you don't have those three things, that money, the time, the opportunity to gamble, and you will abstain. But also make sure you work out why you're gambling. And that's what I want to do next. That's my next stage. And this is the, uh, the counselling I'm going to tomorrow as we film this. And I'll, of course, report back on that. And hopefully, hopefully I'll start making a few more positive videos. But like I say, hopefully something positive can come out of this intensely negative experience. Um, but I really felt I had to share it with you guys out of honesty and also as a, a lesson for everyone. Thanks so much for all my new subscribers. Great to pass 100. I really hope I don't lose too many of you because of this... Uh, because of this relapse, um, I think it's now more important than ever for me, and, and you know, hopefully, I want to try and do some good for other people as well. But um, yeah, if you're happy to stay by my side, I'll uh, I'll keep reporting. I'll let you know how I get on at the uh, counselling tomorrow, and um, we'll catch up on the next video. Hopefully, a bit more of a, a positive way. All right, cheers, guys. I'll catch you again soon. Cheers. Hello, uh, future video editing Phil here. Um, completely forgot to say in that video that uh, I want to send many thanks to uh, Gambling Sucks. Sorry mate, I completely forget your name every time. But he gave me a really nice shout out in his latest video. Uh, so thank you for that. I hope you keep following mate. Um, I think you, maybe your influence to help me push to 100 subscribers, so thanks for that. Um, I hope that your thing with Andy goes really well. Um, I'd really be interested to see that. Hopefully, you never know, maybe one uh, we, can, uh, we can do something in the future. Um, I think we're actually inadvertently building a little bit of a community here. Um, Obviously, Andy being the OG, um, but obviously you and, and Katie, I've been following closely, and uh, hopefully, yeah, maybe we can, maybe we can help, maybe combine forces a little bit to, uh, you know, to hopefully reach a few more people, which would be great. But um, no, thanks for the shout out, mate. So hopefully, this video didn't doesn't come as a bit of a disappointment to you, depending on where I plan to put this message in the video. Um, and yeah, hopefully, you continue to follow, mate. And uh, like I say, thanks for the support, bro. Cheers, mate.